Sometimes, if you're very lucky, you'll come across a great deal on some retro games at a local Goodwill or maybe even a flea market. Unfortunately, sometimes these value valuable pieces of our cultural heritage will show scars from a former life. Stickers, marks, maybe pieces of tape. These things are the bane of a collector's existence. Luckily, I've come across a few tips that I'd like to share that might help you out. Some things I have learned from friends, others I've just tried for the hell of it. But either way, here's a few things you can do to try to beautify your retro gaming collection. First, a few needful things you're going to want to have on hand. A hairdryer with a heat setting. <laughs> Magnum. I thought it was funny. Next, some uh, Mr. Clean Magic Erasers. Now, uh, that's just a name brand. In actuality, this is called Melamine Foam, and you might be able to find it in a few other places. It's uh, basically a microscopic sandpaper that's uh, made of polymer strands, and mm, it's good for cleaning things. Next, some Gugon. Now, this is also a name brand. It's essentially a petroleum and citrus-based adhesive cleaner. WD-40 actually could work pretty well too, but that's a little bit messier. And of course, some paper towels to clean up the messes you're going to make. All right, let's start with some Alien vs. Predator. Man, this is going to be a great movie when it comes out. You'll notice that there's a price sticker from the Goodwill on the front, and a few Blockbuster stickers from almost two decades ago on the back. And if you are at all familiar with Blockbuster, you'll remember that they were really notorious for sticking stickers on everything they could freaking find. So. Take your hairdryer, heat on, and just apply a little bit to the front where that price sticker is. And luckily these aren't too sticky and can come off with just a little bit of heat and some patience. Now unfortunately they do have those little perforations that make it a little hard to get all off on one piece, but if you're careful you can, with little adhesion left over. And flipping it over, uh, you see a couple more stickers. Uh, this is where nails really come in handy, but uh, yeah, work with what you got. First, a little bit of heat on the sticker on the right, which is really just some paper held down by scotch tape. It doesn't leave too much residue, luckily. And uh, a little bit more heat on the sticker on the left, which is just a full-on, uh, some sort of blockbuster retail sticker, I don't know. That's going to be a little bit messier. So uh, the next step is to get a paper towel and fold it a few times over. Uh, nice little square. And then just a dab of Goo Gone. Just a dab. Like that. And uh, you're just going to want to rub this in wherever you have any residue left over from your adhesives. Um, be a little bit careful. You don't have to like scrub it in. Uh, just you know, gently wipe it off and eventually it'll come up by itself. Uh, and then next you're not going to want to let it sit there for too long because, uh, well, this is cardboard and though it's protected, it's... Uh, you know, you know, just don't want to leave stuff on there that's wet there for too long. So, wipe it down with some wet paper towel and then some dry paper towel. And you can see we have a nice shiny box. But it's not always this easy. Uh, here we have a hook box with a uh, full-on, I don't know, some sort of like an address label sticker on there that's, uh, you know, letting us know that there's uh, no instructions. Thanks a lot. Now, unfortunately, this is going to take a lot of heat because stickers like this really get on there. And you're going to have to be very slow, methodical. Uh, you know, pulling it at a 45 degree angle seems to help a little bit, but more often than not, you're going to get a little bit of sticker on there. But that's just going to take more and more time that I'm going to skip for the sake of brevity right now. So let's go back to that Alien vs. Predator game, uh, put the box aside, and, well, You'll see that the cartridge, unfortunately, has a few stickers on it, too. Uh, and someone even etched the name of the Blockbuster store on the back. Damn you, Blockbuster Cotswold 92507, you're destroying our cultural heritage! Anyway, uh, these stickers are a bit of a pain, they're very sticky. But, uh, luckily, a lot of heat and some slow, methodical pulling up will take that sticker right off. Um, this is actually like a plastic security system type sticker, so it doesn't rip off very easily, but it is very adhesive. Uh, I've actually seen some of these that leave, you know, little marks that say void uh, behind, and those are a pain in the ass, but uh, luckily, none here. Very slow, methodical, and it comes right off, though it does leave the residue. And the best part is that uh, these are almost collector items for themselves. I mean, come on, 
Stickers telling you to rewind? You don't see that too often. Hmm. Find something worthwhile? Stick it right on there. Meanwhile, we got this second sticker, which is really held on with uh, scotch tape, basically, but it's right over the label, which will come off if you're not too careful, especially with applying heat. So just be a little bit mindful, use your nails, and uh, yeah, it'll come off, but leaving some residue, which means more goo gone. And luckily I have not found this to actually harm any of the labels on game cartridges or anything like that, as long as you are careful and, you know, actually remove it pretty quickly with that, uh, you know, wet paper towel and then a dry paper towel right after. As long as you're pretty methodical and quick, it shouldn't be a problem. And we're left with a nice clean cartridge, front and back. Well, okay. Sorry for that bit of artistic carving back there. <sighs> I don't know. People will say use a Dremel tool or maybe sandpaper, but I don't suggest that. I just think it'll cause more problems than you're solving. But we're not done yet. There is one more thing wrong with this cartridge, and it's a marker right there on the top. So this is where the magic eraser comes into play. You're going to want to moisten it and uh, make sure that you squeeze out any excess water. That's just going to make a giant mess. You want this thing to be moist, not soaking. All right bring it back and uh, basically just scrub and actually scrub. You know, you're gonna wanna get in there with nooks and crannies. I mean, you're gonna see an immediate effect, but uh, if you really want that off, you're gonna have to scrub a bit. Be mindful, don't go too crazy on it because hell, this is kind of like using extraordinarily fine sandpaper. So you are kind of getting in all those nooks and crannies and you just don't wanna go too far. But on the surface, it's really not gonna damage anything as long as you're careful. So, there we go. Good as new-ish Alien vs. Predator cartridge. Could sell this for, you know, 500, 600 bucks. Maybe if I got it VGA graded, you know, something like that. Now, something I really got for a great price on eBay was Demon's Crest. Awesome game, but it came from a smoker's house and it smelled like it. Not just the box, but, well, even the cartridge too. And, um, yeah, that that's no fun if you're not a smoker. Luckily, I have found a very easy solution, and it is called Fabric Softener Sheets. Uh, lavender is optional. Basically, get one, take your stinky game, and wrap it in it, and uh, put it aside for one day, two days. When you get back to it, it's gonna smell like fabric softener for a while, but soon after that, no smoke at all. And it even works on game boxes, too. I don't know through what black sorcery, but eh, I've tried it. It really does work. Just, uh, you know, take another sheet, Fold it any which way you can in order to actually fit it in there and, uh, you know, crush it flat for a day or two, it should be fine. Uh, unfortunately, not much to be done about the yellowish nicotine stains on the inside of the box, but eh, we're not performing miracles here. If you're looking for something to crush it flat for a few days, which is also helpful in getting those creases out of cardboard boxes, I suggest a giant stack of other games you have just picked up from Goodwill. Eh, I knew that NHL 94 was good for something. So that's just a few ways that you can help critify your collection and maybe even add a little bit of value to it. By the way, most of these tips also work on game cases for you know, PS2, GameCube, what have you. Uh, just be especially careful with Goo Gone on these plastic sleeves. You don't want to let it sit on there too long, um, unless you want the sleeves to maybe melt away. Uh, as a little bit of an addendum, uh, Billy from the Game Chasers has made a video well over a year old, but it actually covers a few things I didn't hear. So I highly suggest that you go over to their YouTube channel, uh, Captain 8-Bit, and, you know, give them a look-see. Uh, you might learn a few more things that could help you. But either way, I'm glad you stayed, and I hope you learned something. I'll see you on the next 16-Bit Gems. This, this is totally not 16-Bit Gem, by the way. Why am I even cleaning this?